Thing. Martin, um, picking up on Michael Gove's theme, are any of the leading exhibitors there British? Well, some of them are, Jeff. In fact, uh, UK trade and industry took a whole uh, bunch of people out from the UK to this show to try and enhance their reputation. I'm delighted to say that one of the companies, in fact, the one that came first place in the particular competition that was launched, is Blipar, which is an augmented reality advertising company. This is Omar Tayeb. Um, Omar, welcome, and congratulations on winning it. Thank you. Just describe, first of all, what your app does. Okay. Blipar is an image recognition and augmented reality platform. Now, what that means is through the camera has the ability to recognize adverts and real-world objects. So say you're reading a newspaper and you see a Tesla advert that's advertising a DVD, you can hold your phone over it, it gives you an interactive experience where you can watch the trailer or buy the DVD straight from the advert instead of having to go to Google, search for it and see where you can buy it from. And you've only been going a few months and already many people are interested in using this kind of technology. Uh, yes, we've been going for the application officially launched about six months ago. And we have about 50 of the top world brands on board, people like Nike, Tesco, Waitrose in the UK. And uh, uh, just this month, we're expanding to the United States. And the interesting thing is, of course, is, is a call to action. It's measurable what the results are. So the effectiveness of marketing is, is, yeah. is, is there in a tabulated form. Yeah, there's two sides to it. There's one side where the consumer gets a rich experience. And the other side is where the brands get some rich data about who's using their products and which adverts are doing well. We can tell them in Waterloo. Uh, this advert's more powerful than the one in Victoria. Right, let's get right under the hood here. You're the guy who wrote the code that made this happen. Yes. So as you know, we're talking about Michael Gove wanting more people like you to come out of school. Yeah. But did it happen for you in school, or what happened? Uh, well, I was generally interested in coding in school, so I was self-taught coding at the beginning. Very simple, but the core code that I learned was at university at Imperial College. And uh, you know, I found it fascinating the way they taught it. I was able to build my own applications. My brother and I built some applications for the iPhone when it first came out. We got over four million downloads. Mm. And um, but the, you you really garnered that power of coding at uni. Yes. So let's but take Michael Gove's I uh, Michael Gove's idea and actually bring that into the classroom in maybe secondary schools. Yeah. Is that going to be easy to achieve? Uh, I think teaching, giving the option to students to be able to learn at school would be good. And uh, with the current coding, it's pretty simple to with a few lines of code to build a simple application. So I think it's just to give people at school the interest there, and at university they can get into the core of it. So it might, it might take a little while, I guess, until it they will, get Yeah, I mean, yeah, you need the infrastructure, you need the right teachers. It's not something that can happen within you know, September time. And my congratulations on your app. Well done on that, and thank you for giving that perspective. So yes, uh, Jeff, some uh, many talented people here, but they sort of learned the hard way at the beginning. If Michael Gove's ambition is to be realized, certainly we'll need some talented people in British schools very quickly. All right, uh, Martin, many thanks for that. I'm so glad you did that interview and not me. Uh, I don't think I was really up to it. Uh, I'm sure it's a very good product. Uh, I'll have to uh, read into it a little more.